Swim coach, he's out there. Okay. They were, uh, oh, is anybody from the administration? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mr. Yeah, can you get back there? Graham had it on his desk um, to be signed. See, it can't be dinner with you guys, and I miss everything. Yeah. 
Pop them on down. Um, I'm read the See, that starts at six. Can we start the attorney interviews at four people, you think? I could ask Karen. What day is that? The next Monday. 30 is 4 30. Monday, 4 30. Next one. This coming Monday. Public meeting for the So we do that and then get out. Dr. Ryan, with the 15th, we're going to have counsel attorney interviews starting at 5 30. Yeah, I'm going to check them right now. I had it for five anyway, so 4 30. It's not Trying to take you to the last person to bump them up to the first slot or something. Yeah, we'll go from four thirty to six, half hour each. But that that's a fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Help. Sure, Mars. Here's a compliment. <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening. The Monday, May 8, 2017, Common Council meeting is now in session. Our invocation is by Pastor Thomas Thews of St. Paul Memorial United Methodist Church. Pastor, are you here? I don't think so. Pastor Davis. Pastor Davis. Um, Karen White, can I turn to you? You sure can. Ask everyone to please stand and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, for this is the day that you've made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for all the young people that we'll be recognizing this evening. We ask that you guide what we do, the decisions that we make, that they will be made for our citizens and for the city of South Bend. Amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> Ms. Fowler, roll call, please. Councilmember Preston? <coughs> Here. Councilmember Kelly? Here. Councilmember Broton? Here. Councilmember Barnard? Present. Vice President Davis? Not here at the time. Councilmember Borden? Here. Councilmember Furley? Here. Councilmember White? Present. President Shim Scott? Present. Ace Present. Thank you. Subcommittee on minutes, please. To the Common Council in the City of South Bend, the subcommittee has inspected the minutes of the April 10th and April 24th, 2017 <coughs> meeting of the Common Council and found them to be correct. Therefore, we recommend the same be approved. Make a motion to accept the report from the subcommittee on the two minutes as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Special business, please. 1723. 1723, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, publicly commending and honoring the Riley High School 2016-17 boys swim team on its successful season at Citywide Northern Indiana Conference NIC and Sectional Champions. Thank you as their presenter. Please state your name and address. Thank you, Tim Scott, 711 Forest Avenue, South Bend, Indiana, 46616. Um, this time... Would the swim team coaches all come up here? <laughs> Every single one. <laughs> Great <laughs> walk. You got one? One what? One swim team? You said coaches. Coaches. No, you said coaches. And the team. There was a team. All right. There we go. There was a team between those two words. Yeah. Yeah. Very pastel 
Approved. <laughs> I will read the resolution. Resolution 463417. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, publicly commending and honoring the Riley High School 2016-2017 Boys Swim Team as successful season as Citywide Northern Indiana Conference NIC and sectional champs. Whereas the Common Council proudly recognizes the 2016-2017 Riley High School Boys Swim Team on a successful swim season, whereas they won the Citywide, the NIC, and the sectional champions, stripping their perennial regional champ in Penn High School. Yeah. <laughs> They're not in the city, right? right? And securing their regional NIC title for the first time in 10 years. Whereas the Riley Wildcats have amassed an amazing dual meet record of 154 and 21 under the tutelage of head coach John Vanderreach. <laughs> All I know is Italian. So. Um, under Coach John's instruction, we have also placed in the top ten in the state championship five times, including state runner-up in 2002 and 2003. Coach John is also the head coach and owner of the South Bend Swim Club, a team he founded in 2006 while to serve uh, as the feeder program for Riley High School. There's been as many as 150 current and future Wildcats in the swim club. Whereas, on behalf of the entire community and South Bend Common Council, it is honored to recognize the hard work and dedication of the team, coaches, managers, athletic director, and school principal. The Common Council extends their appreciation to the coaches, athletes, directors, principals for their time and dedication and guidance, and the parents as well. I'll throw that in. John Van Riesi, head coach, Ted Meck, assistant coach, Ryan Moser, diving coach, Marie Doan, athletic director, and Francois. Bye again, principal. The members of the 2016-2017 Riley High School for varsity swim team includes seniors. Just wave your hand if you're here. Carter Baker, Noah Debu, Cody Frame, Brett Maurer, Brandon Schwing. That's a good swim name. Eduardo uh, Santorio. John Stutzman, Juniors, Adam Broadstreet, Kyle Kirkpatrick, Kyle Kitta, Alex Polowinski, Earl Thomas, Garrett Woodbury. Sophomores, Isaac Baker, Tyler Bates, Joey Gomes, Aiden Meyer, Bryce Schwing, Kyle Kitta. Shalai, Ruben Valquez, Andrew Wolinski. Freshmen, Gabe Falcone, Spencer Houghton, Bryce Knight, and Dieter Rosinski. Wow. Roskowski. Where do we know that name from? Now, therefore, be resolved the Common Council of the City of South Bend as follows. Section 1, the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, publicly honors and congratulates the 2016-2017 Riley High School Boys Swim Team for winning the Citywide Championship Northern Indiana Conference and sectional championships. The, the council extends a special thanks to all your parents and family and friends who supported and encouraged these amazing athletes. Section two, this resolution shall be in full force and effective from and after adoption by the council council and approved by the mayor. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'd like to have one of the coaches or to yes, please sir. share your thoughts. Uh, come, come forth and just share your name and address uh, and um, just share some thoughts. My, my name is Johnny Andres. My address is 205 Burnwood Trail in North Liberty. Uh, uh, I'd just like to thank you for, for this honor for the, uh, for the team for us. It's just one more thing to an incredible season. We have a, a, a more than a long tradition of, of success here. We, we're very proud of the culture we've created and we've maintained over the years. Uh, we're just a great group of young men. I couldn't be more proud to be affiliated with them where we are. So thank you for this honor, and I know we have important business to take care of, so thank you. I'll make sure. So. We'd, like to, we'd like to hear from one of the captains or uh, uh, appointed persons. Yeah. 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 All 
All right, thank you. John took the cap for some reason. There you go. Thank you. Take your name, address. And tell us why they told you, Captain. Uh, no, go for it. Uh, my name is Brett Maurer. I live at 52384 Hollyhock Road, South Bend, Indiana. Um, <laughs> um, I came to Riley because I was on the South Bend Swim Club and um, realized that I wanted to swim for Coach Mandrish in high school. So I came to Riley, and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. This is a great group of guys. Um, Brandon is one of the best co-captains I could have asked for, and just to be able to be on the team this season has been a tremendous honor. I, it has been one of the greatest seasons in all four of my years. Absolutely fantastic. Wow. Thank you. Anybody else in the area? Okay. At this time, I'd like to open it up um, for a public discussion. Uh, those who would like to speak in favor of this resolution. Please come forth and share your thoughts. Marriage right comes to a stop. No, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. You got a guy who can walk in. Come on. You got bad names? We're going to honor you. Go ahead and say, say your name and, and address. All we got to say is 2468. Who do we appreciate? Wildcat. Right. Right. Out of that. Uh, anybody else from the public? Those who would like to speak in the opposition, y'all can swim away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we close the public discussion. We'll start from the first, uh, second district, and um, you can come on the campus way. All right. Congratulations on a fantastic season. I noticed you have quite a few youngsters that's going to be coming back, so we look forward to seeing you again next year. Congratulations. All right. When I was a proud Adams Eagle back in the 70s, there was a fierce rivalry, swim team rivalry between Adams and, and Riley. That it was epic, and I uh, really admire you guys for keeping that uh, respectability and that honor uh, with Riley. Well done. Congratulations. By the way, who won back then? Uh, we don't have to talk about that. Swim team been in water. <laughs> Uh, coaches, thank you for um, this uh, magnificent tradition uh, that you've crafted at, at Riley. Um, and obviously, uh, when you participate in, in a sport like swimming, or actually any sport, but the number of hours that you spend in the pool is, is just phenomenal. So um, to you fellas, uh, terrific. I, I, I'm assuming it's early morning workouts, summer workouts all year round. Um, so, so great, great work, um, staying with the sport, giving your heart to it, and it's, it's wonderful to see these types of results. Um, and I would also probably guess, I'd, I'd be safe in guessing that you're not only athletes that are having success, but you are also student athletes, and, and you're doing well in the classroom. So um, thank you for, you know, balancing that and uh, your leadership at, at Riley High School, not only in the pool and in this sport, but also academically. So congratulations to you and uh, best wishes to the seniors who are graduating. I hope you continue. This is a lifetime sport that you've been gifted with. Um, uh, hopefully some of you will go on in college and participate intramurally um, or maybe even on uh, uh, a team level there. So good luck with that as well as with your academics. But as uh, Regina Preston had said, fellow, fellow council member, um, we got a lot of uh, work to do uh, ahead, I'm sure, over the summer and uh, keeping the tradition going. So congratulations and best wishes as you go forward. Thank you. Councilman Ron. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, certainly congratulations to you. It's, it's difficult for any institution to maintain any sort of tradition mm -hmm. in the extent. I, I, I believe it even goes back to the 60s, Coach, that the mm -hmm. rallies, uh, including a number of state champions. So... Uh, it's a moment to, uh, to, to, to live in your success, to, uh, to enjoy that success. When you get a chance, uh, really take a chance to thank your parents. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I know somebody was, was driving you. I know that they spend hours. Um, I know the coach appreciates that. And uh, I also know that you're, you're, you're being led by a, a great bunch of people. So take that, add it to your life experiences, and, and much success in the future. Before we hear from Councilman Rorty, all the parents please stand. All the yeah, parents who are you. here, so that's a thank you. Oh, Let's give them a big hand. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rorty, for that. Now to Councilman Rorty. 
I'd just like to echo what my uh, colleagues have said. I know that it takes a tremendous amount of stick to it uh, by both the parents and the team. Uh, congratulations on your success. In my day, Riley was known for two things, uh, and that goes back a ways, uh, swimming and golf. And uh, so it's nice to see you continue the tradition. All right. Congratulations on a great season. We would like to thank all of the students, the swimmers, the coaches, uh, the leadership at Raleigh High School. It's just amazing how you, the coach, and also the students that are under your leadership, that you've been able to sustain that long history of tradition, but also success. And so we thank each and every one of you. You've made South Bend proud, and the parents, we thank you for sharing your students, not only with the coach, but also with Raleigh High School. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, you know, I love swimming. Swimming is such a great exercise because it's a great motivator, too, because when you stop swimming, what happens? You sink. <laughs> so you got to get going and you get better. So um, these resolutions go in the city records. So your names are always going to be in the city records from here until eternity. So uh, you're a part of history, part of South Bend. We appreciate that, the accomplishments that you guys have done, and we honor that in your part of history. So congratulations, guys. I'd like to also just echo all of the comments that my colleagues have said. And I was really impressed with your captain when he said that he came because he wanted to um, go to school and be under your tutelage coach. It's amazing to see what the power of influence can have upon a young person. Not undoing myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you. Under the water. <laughs> well, that's good. But it's great to see that, that, you know, you have that kind of influence and, and encouragement for the young men here. I'd like to thank all the parents who have come out here tonight and who have been a supporter of them. So we are very pleased to have you tonight, and it's an honor to honor you tonight. So what is the pleasure of this council? Well, we adopt this by acclamation. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say aye. It is carried. Congratulations.
So Skatowski said, we'll see. 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 We'll <laughs> okay, we'll move on with business. At this time, we do not have any reports from city offices. We are represented by Susanna Fritzberg for the mayor's office. Thank you, Susanna, for coming. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to rise of the committee whole. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The Committee of the Whole is now in session. This is the portion of the Council meeting where the full Council meets as a committee. Uh, during each ordinance, you will have the opportunity to either speak in favor or against. Your comments will be limited to five minutes per bill. City Clerk, would you please read 2117? 2117. Public hearing on an ordinance to vacate the following described property. First, east-west alley north of western and south of Wayne, running approximately 118 feet from the east right-of-way of, of South Taylor Street. Is there a committee report? Yeah, the Public Works and Property Vacation Committee uh, discussed this bill this afternoon and sent it to full council without recommendation, uh, primarily based uh, on hopeful testimony uh, from community investment this evening. Eliciting their objections to it. Please state your name and address. Kevin Baumgartner, 315 South Taylor, 46601. Does anybody need copies? Something for uh, copies? You can. I think we're okay. Do I give them the city clerk? Thank you. Well, hello again to everybody. I, I met some people earlier today. Uh, it'll be redundant for some, but we would like to uh, take the alley and make it a driveway for our house. And uh, we do have a, the picture uh, of the alley on the second page. As you can see, it's uh, run down and rocks and wet and uh, puddles. And, uh, another thing is right next to the house, which is probably not code anymore which can be dangerous for uh, the tenants, and even when I was mowing, I had issues. Uh, we would uh, pave the, the alley, which would become our driveway, and then uh, put a uh, chain link gate in the back uh, with probably a trumpet vine or something of that nature just to make it pretty. Uh, we would have a gate just in case we ever needed to open it just for access. And uh, we, we did do this in 2004. Uh, we did get an approval at that time. And the company, which was next to us, the telecommunication company, did not have a driveway, so they needed that, and they were afraid to allow us to, to take the, as an alley, as our driveway. Uh, they've since put in a driveway, and uh, we've contacted them, and they in the letter, which is in there, they're very favorable of us just taking it and for privacy and, and security. So we're happy about that. And that's really about it. We'd like to take it, pave it, make it pretty, and uh, help the city and us. And that's about it. Thank you so much. Are there any questions from council at this time? Seeing none, we'll move to the public portion. Oh, I'm sorry, there was a report from community investment was going to weigh in on this. Is, is right now, is that the time, or do they speak during the public? Speak for or against. Yeah, they yeah, speak for or against, right. I think. And then we can ask questions if we need to afterwards. I don't think they're part of the presentation. Yeah. So we'll have to speak to well, the we, public. Well, but we then can't we'll speak to them. Well, if, if they come up for or against, we don't normally yes. speak to them. We can people. ask questions after. Since so then come up after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. Thanks. So we'll, we'll open it up to the public now. So if there's anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor, And if, just please come to the podium. State your name and address. Yes. <laughs> Shelly Baumgartner, 315 South Taylor Street, South Bend, Indiana, 46601. And I am in 
complete in agreement with my husband. Um, it's been a concern for me for the safety of our tenants. We live directly across the street from them. We take great pride in our neighborhood. The alley is unsightly and not maintained. We would like to turn that into a driveway. Um, like you said, we'll keep it very attractive, uh, pave it, and I think it would be an improvement for the neighborhood for the development around us um, being so close to the baseball stadium. Thank you so much. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Please state your name and address. Hello, my name is Tim Corcoran. I'm the Director of Planning for South Bend, 14-4 of this building. Uh, the reason community investment uh, did not uh, recommend favorably in this situation is that uh, South Bend is the primary landholder in this, on this block. Uh, there are three property owners, the Baumgartners, the telecommunications firm, and South Bend. Uh, access is a critical part of, of property ownership, uh, and we want to just ensure that we maintain uh, future access uh, depending on how the overall block develops in the future. And to us, it's really just, a, uh, uh, just to uh, have that as an option. Uh, if in the future uh, that is seen as not being necessary, we would be uh, happy to uh, vacate it at a, at a later point. But at this point, we feel like it uh, would be in our best interest to maintain access. And if you have any questions regarding that. And we'll, no, no, sorry. We can't really is there it. anyone else uh, wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, the public portion is now closed. Um, and again, I'll defer to our, our city council attorney, but I believe because the administration is... So, so typically what we're not allowed to ask questions of remonstrators or people speak in favor. However, this is a unique case. So I, any I, questions of... Can I say his response to this? Please. The respondent's response doesn't get response. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. You, you, sir, uh, you have five minutes for a rebuttal. And then, then I'll be back to Bob Gardner. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I don't see what an alley next to the property for future uh, access could help the city, why they would want an, a throughway right next to the house. Uh, and again, they're not taking care of it. They haven't taken care of it for 20 some years. So. I don't understand that, but that's, you know, but that's really about it. Okay. Cool. Uh, with that, council no, questions no. for either the, either the presenter or uh, the administration. And Mr. Yes, um, my questions will be for the administration. Um, so um, if I'm looking at this correctly with that being north, um, Mr. Baumgartner's house is to the north. To the west. Well, our the, the house is to the north, yes. Yeah. Our living house is to the west of that. Right. To the top of the photo, right. I, I should north. say. I don't have an uh, arrow on it. So, um, the alley and then telecommunication is below the alley. Correct. Right? So, you guys, the city does not, is not connected to this alley in any way. There is an alley. There's a north south alley that, that terminates at an east west alley. Right. So I would say this property here and everything down below, you have access from those alleys, right? And the streets. Sure. Correct? But, okay. Hang on. Um, you say for future development. What time frame is that future development? It's unknown. Okay. Question. Uh, uh, Mr. Bumgard, he just said that he's been taking care of that part of the alley. Um, for 27 plus years, 20 years. Is there any reason why the city has not um, helped to take care of that part of it or anything? No, that's for you, the city. Um, I am unsure about what the city's commitment is to maintaining alleys. I mean, that is a public works question, I believe. Um, so I, I, it's probably maintained as much as any other alley. Let me put it this way. Um, what is the condition of the alley over the last year, and how has that been? Actually, I've there is a picture there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I, 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 I don't know. I haven't been to that alley recently. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, the understanding of the care and observing of all of that 
the city has really has not paid too much attention to that alley in the past. Uh, Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? This is what does. Okay. Oh, I saw you skipping. Sorry. Uh, Okay. Go, I'll I'll okay. So uh, the photos that you provided, what are the, the dates that those photos were taken? Uh, approximately seven days ago. Okay. And then um, in these photos, I'm looking at an alleyway that's uh, inundated with water on both ends. Um, but I'm also wondering about its actual boundaries to your house and has it extended into your property line? What do you mean extended? Well, I don't know. Well, that, I would yeah. say the alley has probably moved through the years from the original. Uh, they did, the city did put in the concrete, uh, what do you call that, a curb or apron? Mm -hmm. and, the, and they decided the west. Where, where it would go, I suppose. Okay. And is this align with that apron, or is it, it would going be a, beyond? Well, if we were to, I don't know the exact procedure, but I would actually just align it with the apron myself. But I don't know if we need to find out the exact. Being as the people next to us, and I'm not going to go up to their fence or anything, but we would use the apron that's there. Let's go straight back then. Okay. So, um, uh, in terms of uh, our city development plans for that uh, block, um, if I look to the south toward western, there is no alley access, right, that goes all the way through. Am I looking at this That's photo correct. correctly? And, uh, at one time, that was a Fred's transmission, and mm -hmm. they had a big parking lot there. So the city actually would pick our trash up from the, the rear and then just go through Fred's transmission alley. And then, of course, they took all that out. And then now the trash is picked up from the front now. Okay. Um, I guess with three, uh, I, I'm going to comment too. Uh, we'll, 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 save, we'll save comments until okay. after questions. We'll have time for comments. And I might need to come back to questions as well. well. This question goes to administration. You had made mention uh, that the administration, the city is looking at holding this property or the right to really utilize this um, property or this land for future use. And if at a certain period of time, if there's no future use, then your administration will be open. Yeah, so, uh, absolutely. So it's it's so the mother question. On the other hand, would you be open if you if we if you were to go and say, okay, go ahead, we support your uh, uh, request, and if there's any future use in the uh, future, then we would come back and have a discussion. So well, this flip-flopping, what you it, just said. I believe once it's vacated, mm -hmm. it is, it, the, the alley then gets split in two. Mm -hmm. Half of the alley goes to the north and half of the alley south. goes to the south. Mm -hmm. uh, that would then preclude us from, if that was the right location for an alley, mm -hmm. which I'm not saying that in the future it would be, but we don't want to hamstring ourselves in the future mm -hmm. if, if development uh, around it uh, needed something like that. So but as of today and in the near future, there's no plans for this land. Correct. And there's nothing in the works, um, nothing has been even discussed. Correct. Okay. Tim, would, would it make sense to <coughs> grant a temporary easement mm -hmm. to the Baumgartners, right, in, instead of, what would be your preference? Would it be to vacate this or would it be a, potentially a temporary easement where they could use this for five, ten years, pave it, have control over, you know, who goes in and out, and then it would revert back to the city at some given time, at least have the option then to... Any sales. Or, oh yeah, yeah, you can put something in there if there was a sale. I mean, does that make sense to potentially continue this and see if you can work out some sort of agreement on a temporary easement or some sort of use agreement? Uh, generally speaking, I think we would like to always maintain control of property and right of way is a preference uh, of mine, and I believe it should be the preference of the city. But, uh, and I'm not sure if a temporary access agreement of, or easement, as you uh, described, could work, uh, but I can look into that. I just want to be able to answer that question right now. Or alternatives, I guess I'd like to add, alternatives of how to remedy. He's got a, an alleyway that's not been graded. Um, that may be expanding beyond its, you know, into his property line. Um, I guess I'm, yeah. Not just the legal. Um, Tim, 
Do you are you guys in any type of agreement with uh, CSNL or uh, have any plans in the next one to five years to buy that property? The yes. telecommunication. Yes. No, no, we're not. Okay. Um, but if they were looking to sell, it would be. I understand that. Um, also, yeah. has this council been fairly uh, cooperative with the city if they wanted to redesign, remap, replat uh, a city block like this? Yes. Have you have has the council been mm -hmm. cooperative in terms of mm -hmm. which part? Future development, replotting, replatting, redeveloping a city block like this. Well, uh, probably beyond your experience, on count. Yeah, my, my okay. experience. I'm, I'm assuming the answer to that is yes. <laughs> but okay. I, 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 <laughs> you're good. All right. Thank you, Kevin. That's uh, my question. And then, Councilmember Preston. Um, just one of the. I guess this question is for Mr. Baumgartner. Um, you had mentioned something earlier about. I thought I remember, and I see a letter in here that the folks who own the property. What is that to the That's south? Um, that they they said. Well, it says here, and I just want to clarify that they agree to vacate their rights and giving all rights to you. If so, if this process moves forward, this was, and that's your understanding, correct? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so this was in came up in light of what I think you were saying, Mr. Parkman, about well, if we do this, you know, and we want to buy it back, you know, it, it splits. But it sounds like there may be an agreement, and there's something in writing here about that all going to the uh, one owner. But it's just a comment. Thank you. And question, Mr. Vorty. Well, she's first. Sure. Um, so with regard, um, DCI, with regard to this uh, block, square block. Uh, does it fall into a corridor plan? Do we have a vision for this block or the adjacent blocks? I believe the southern portion of the site does fall within the west side Main Street's plan. Uh, the, the remainder of the block does not. Um, the uh, block uh, this was purchased and the properties demolished before my time. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the intent was at that time. Um, so, what I see in terms of that piece, of, that parcel, is that it represents one of the best opportunities that we have as a city to uh, to uh, do something really creative and interesting there. And I would just, I just don't want to, uh, uh, you know, make a decision now that prevents something potential in the future. Now. When that point comes, and if that alley is no longer needed, we're very happy to, to vacate any alley that we don't see as being necessary. Council Member Horty? Yeah. Um, first of all, let me defend the uh, City Street Department. Uh, in the spring, the alleys are always in their worst condition because nobody's been able to maintain them all winter. And from my experience working for the street department, this is the time of year when calls come in because my alley has potholes in it or has water standing or things like that. Alley maintenance for unpaved alleys is an ongoing uh, seasonal uh, thing, so I don't think we should jump on the city for not particularly maintaining this alley. I would guess this alley is seldom used by the look of it to begin with, and I don't think the city ought to be incorporating or keeping it uh, in abeyance or in limbo until you may or may not need it. I think, uh, I think as you envision what you're going to do with that block, you should just, in my opinion, forget this little 12-foot wide alley and let the Bumgartners have it and improve it. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'll be mm -hmm. thinking and mm -hmm. voting. So it sounds like we're transitioning to comments? <laughs> yes. Um, with that, no, I thought we were there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if, uh, comments, and you don't need to share any comments if you don't have any. So none from Councilmember Preston, any from Councilmember Kelly? Councilmember Broden, any comments? Yeah, I, would, I certainly would um, prefer to see either an easement arrangement, something that's more temporary in nature, um, I certainly am sympathetic to, you know, the water, the privacy, um, but we all deal, deal with that, with, with um, the shape of our um, alleyways across the city. So, um, you know, I guess I'm tending toward a more practical solution that hits 
um, our, our desire to develop this entire uh, square block in a smart way. Um, I, I don't want you know that clock to be endless for you um, as a resident who has been there for a long time at your current address. Um, I remember when you first renovated at your house. Um, and uh, I had hair. Yeah. <laughs> and mine wasn't great. Um, so, I mean, you've been there a long time. So, uh, you know, we, I don't want this clock to go on, but, but we're all impatient, you know, with, with um, wanting our city to redevelopment, to redevelop. So, um, so I, I guess I'm, I'm on the side of still looking for uh, the sites coming together. Um, and a real compromise that, you know, hits some of your concerns, um, you know, whether it's to improve the, the alleyway, um, uh, maybe get it back to the shape where it should be, um, uh, put up, you know, something that limits the traffic coming in and out, uh, whether it be on that far eastern side. So I, I'm looking for something practical here. I would hate to, um, having... I guess I'd like to be in the position of, of charging you both to, to go back to the table and work on this and to figure out something that could work temporarily for all of us. Um, for you adjacent and your tenants um, and the city, you know, trying to hit its goal, um, you know, in this important uh, 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 piece of land. Okay. Dr. Brown? <coughs> yeah. I appreciate the fact that the, the city wants to control everything around certain areas. Um, as I look at it, there's only two parcels that are not belong to the city, if I read it correctly. Um, one of them is the cell tower, which would be a very expensive endeavor to uh, purchase and have to replace. Um, I believe Mr. Bumgartner asked us to make him an offer or something like that. He said he'd be willing to, to entertain discussions of purchase. If we've got to have this so bad, I think we probably ought to direct redevelopment to, to purchase it. But unless we're going to purchase it, I think Mr. Baumgartner, if he's willing to put 12 feet wide, 50 feet of concrete in, or whatever it amounts to, that is not an inexpensive endeavor, and the city would just ask him about what we have to pay for concrete. Um, I see this as an opportunity to make an improvement, which may last for 5 years, 10 years, or 20 years. And this is a permanent thing that's going to happen tonight, or would happen if we wait for the city to wait for the right opportunity, that could be another 10 years or 20 years, and not outside the realm of possibility. If it happens sooner, great. We would simply have to purchase the uh, Mr. Baumgartner's property, and we do things like that all the time, all the time. I, I'm, I'm inclined, if Mr. Baumgartner is to make the improvements that he says he's going to make, that alone makes it worth our effort because we have no plans in the near future, as, as I see it. Thank you. Um, just a quick note. Um, uh, tonight, I, I would recommend, and I'm not making a motion now to give more comments, but uh, I would recommend that we do continue this just for two weeks, just to see if there is some sort of temporary use agreement that could benefit both parties that could be worked out. Mr. Davis. Yeah. I believe that um, um, both parties, um, especially from the city standpoint, shared that they were not interested in the easement. And so with that understanding, they don't even have a plan in place. Mr. Baumgartner has a plan in place. I think we need to move forward. And therefore, I'd like to make a motion. Oh, no, wait, wait, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I made my comment. I'm ready to make a motion to go favorably. Me too. Uh, President Scott. Um, in the business world, uh, we've had salespeople come up and say, well, we're going to have future potential sales. <laughs> really can't run a business on future potential sales. Um, that's all I gotta say. I'm ready to vote as well. I support uh, the comments made by um, uh, a number of the council members. Uh, it's hard to say I'm going to wait for the future and not necessarily knowing what that future is going to look like with the plans. Uh, and so at this time, you know, I'm going to support the homeowner and uh, wish him well. And if by chance that you come back, with the administration, you have a plan. Then we have another level of discussion at that time. All right, good. Is there a motion? I'd like to make the fund that we bring Bill 2117 to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Um, Roll call. 7 2. No. It, it is? 7 2. 7 2. Okay. Uh, City Clerk, would you please read 2317? 
First, Northwest Alley, running north approximately 170 feet and 14 feet wide from Indiana Avenue, west of High Street and east of Marietta Street. Is there a committee report? Uh, yeah, there sure is. Uh, the Public Works and Property Vacation Committee sent this to the Council with a favorable recommendation. Hi. Um, Andrew, name and address. Um, Andrew Peak. My address is 717 East Indiana Avenue. Um, I own the property next door to it. Like I said earlier, I bought my house in tax lien, and the house next or the lot next door was a tore down house. It was a abandoned lot, no one was taken care of. I bought it in a tax certificate, sold it to try and better improve the look and maintain it. And I figured I could also do off-street parking since I don't have any on my property. Um, and it, to do that, according to code and everything, I'd have to add a break in the curb because of the alley. Is I can't have parking off the alley. So that would just be adding another curb and, and driveway basically through the whole lot. So I'd like to combine them and fence in and make it look better. Thank you so much. Any questions from council at this time? Seeing them, we'll I'm sorry, well, yes. just, just one comment. You, um, I believe the you're required if you're having off street parking to have it on a paved uh, something you can't yeah. just park in a, in a correct vacant lot. Yeah. I was, yeah, okay. I was working with code to find out why I could do it. Then, uh, like I said, they told me I'd have to put the brake in the curb, and yeah. I already had the alley right next to my house. So, what would end up being my driveway would be the alley. Right. I'd end up finishing that off. Okay. With no other questions, we'll move to the public portion. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor? Anyone from the public wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing no one, public portion is closed. Back to the council. I move that uh, Bill 23-17 be sent to the council with a favorable recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion carries. City Clerk, would you please read 2417? 2417. Public hearing on an ordinance to men, correct, and replace ordinance number 10497-17 to vacate the following described property, east-west alley from east right-of-way of Laurel Street, a distance of 144 feet and width of 49.5 feet north of Thomas Street and south of Washington Street. Uh, is there a committee report? Yes, there is. Uh, Public Works Property Vacation Committee met and gave this a favorable recommendation, recognizing that uh, the 12-foot vacation stated in the ordinance was really a misstatement and should have been 49 feet, which is, I'd hate to state your, <laughs> take away your presentation, but uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a stub of Jefferson Street, not an alley vacation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, members of council, for the uh, comment. Uh, council yes, member reporting. Uh, Alan Dean DeRose, uh, city attorney and interim attorney to the council, with offices on the 12th floor of this building. On February 13, 2017, you passed an ordinance 10497, which, as council member already said, was uh, intended to vacate a portion of the right of public right of way to allow the Center for History to move a building and locate it on that property. Uh, when the clerk's office uh, checked the ordinance with the county auditor, it was discovered that there was an error in the description, and that instead of um, 12 feet that was described in the original ordinance, it's 49.5 feet north. And so this ordinance will make that correction. Thank you. Any questions from council? Seeing none, we'll move to the public portion. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing no one, the public portion is closed. Back to the council. What's your pleasure? Move for the um, bill 2417 to come to the council with a uh, favorable recommendation as stated by John Boyd. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> I heard a second over there, too. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to drive the result from the community of the whole. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries.
Full council is now back in session. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Fowler, would you please give third reading to 2117. 2117. Third reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property. First east west alley north of Weston and south of Wayne running approximately 118 feet from the east right of way of South Taylor Street. Move for the passage of Bill 21-7. Second. Ms. Fowler. Council Member Preston? Aye. Council Member Kelly? Aye. Council Member Brogan? Nay. Council Member Barner? Aye. Vice President Davis? Aye. Council Member Gordy? Aye. <clears throat> Council Member Furlick? Aye. Council Member White? Aye. Council Member Scott? Aye. Eight aye. Great. Uh, 2317, please. 2317. Third reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property. First, Northwest Alley, running north approximately 170 feet and 14 feet wide from Indiana Avenue, west of High Street and east of Marietta Street. Motion for passage. Second. Ms. Fowler. Council Member Kelly? Aye. Council Member Broden? Aye. Council Member Varner? Aye. Vice President Davis? Aye. Council Member Bordy? Aye. Council Member Furley? Aye. Council Member White? Aye. Council Member Preston? Aye. President Scott? Aye. Nine ayes. Thank you. 2417, please. 2417, third reading on an ordinance to amend, correct, and replace ordinance number 10-497-17 to vacate the following described property, east-west alley from the east right-of-way of Laurel Street in a distance of 144 feet and width of 49.5 feet north of Thomas and south of Washington Street. Move for passage. Second. Ms. Fowler? Council Member Broton? Aye. Council Member Barnum? Aye. Vice President Davis? Aye. Council Member Bordy? Aye. Council Member Furley? Aye. Council Member White? Aye. Council Member Preston? Aye. Council Member Kelly? Aye. Vice, I mean, President Tim Scott? Aye. Nine aye. Thank you. Resolution 1717, please. 1717, a resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, approving a petition of the Area Board of Zoning Appeals for the property located at 226 East Indiana. Is there a committee report? Zoning. Uh, what was that name? Uh, John, um, John, John Crossy. Yeah, I had uh, that one. Thank and you, John. What did we do with that? Um, favorable. Favorable. favorable recommendation. Here you go. Iona Pink, Zoning and Business Services Administrator with the Building Department at 125 Lafayette, Suite 100. The special exception application for a duplex in an SF2 single family, two family district comes to you with a favorable recommendation from the Area Board of Zoning Appeals. This was initiated by the current owner's inquiry about the potential legal non conforming use of the property. They confirmed that the house had ceased use as a duplex for more than 12 months, and since no prior approval was given to use the property as a duplex, they had to apply for a special exception. There were persons at the ABZA meeting that did speak in remonstrance of the applications. Concerns were raised about the overall effect of the use of the duplex or of the property on the area and the condition of the property as well. Whether the existing building was actually a duplex and uh, pro um, concerns about the increase of on-street parking as well as traffic in the area. The findings of fact in your package from the ABCA meeting address the concerns regarding the potential effect of the use of the property as a duplex and the conditions on, of the property. And if the property is to be used as a duplex, the owner will have to ensure the building meets code standards for the duplex and make application for any applicable permits to bring the building up to that code. Uh, also, duplexes require two uh, parking spaces per unit, so the property will have to provide four parking spaces altogether. And right now, we don't have any concerns that they will be able to provide those spaces. And, they, and if they are not, they'll have to apply for a variance in the future, but that's not uh, relevant to today's application. Thank you. Council, any questions at this point? No. Is the presenter here? Or the petitioner, I'm sorry. Please state your name and address and, and give us a brief uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, my name is Dora Cruz. My address is 725 Birchwood in South Bend, Indiana. Zip code is 46619. And the address that I came for is 226 East Indiana. Um, I get a little bit of trouble because my this is not. That's fine. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Just and explain. I am so nervous. <laughs> Just take your time. You're fine. Just explain what you want to do with the property. I want to do a duplex, 
and I, um, I came to the hearing a few days ago, and I was thinking how I want to do um, the improvement. Impro improvement. Um, I can do um, bigger. Um, well, I can. I have enough space for uh, for parking lots. Um, I can turn the trees down. Um, the property is very big, and um, it's a lot of parking lot in Indiana Street. Um, what else I can say? <laughs> if in, you can call me, if you have a question, I can uh, I can answer. What yes. was the reason why you wanted to buy the property? Oh, I buy the property because um, uh, we have a daughter. Um, she is in college in. Um, a USB, um, and we try to go to back to Mexico, and we want to leave um, something for our daughter that she can leave. Um, I've been saving money to um, to make this uh, property very good for her, and um, the purpose was um, okay. Um, make two duplex because she can live in one and she can rent the other one and she can get money for college. Okay. And um, I was working um, because my, um, I don't have the, the whole knowledge to do everything right, but um, I started with, um, going to um, a meeting with Ruya and I hear a lot of very, very good things about properties and how um, People can make improvements, and um, I take a few advice from those very wise people, and um, they um, they um, they told me that. And uh, okay, um, I decide to make this thing for that. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> you're good. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any questions for the present? No? Seeing none. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up to the public. Is anybody from the public wishing to speak in favor? If anybody wants to speak in favor, please come to the podium, state your name and address. Uh, my name is Andrew Peake. I live at 717 East Indiana. Like I said, I bought my tax lien house over a year ago. And I will admit, in that time, the house that she's talking about has shown a lot, great deal of improvements. It is improving the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone one else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against, please come to the podium and state your name and address. Yes, thank you. I'm Gene Wilkinson. I, I'm a landlord. Name and address, I, address please. Oh, I'm sorry. 20578 Hines Drive, South Bend, Indiana. Okay. I'm a landlord, and I'm a property owner. And I'm representative. All the people I talked to, nobody knew about this. So I talked to them today, and I have a list of names. I got letters from them. Plus, the people who got the letter uh, and told Slagle they own two houses, one 500 Bill and 230 Haney. They're both against it completely because their homes are single family. And my home, I have one home at 541 Haney, is a duplex. It was built as a duplex by Senator Perkins. And it's always been maintained, and the church tell glad I do that. My next house is 314, um, 317 Haney. It's a single family. And all these people here do not want that return to, to be put in duplex. Now, I went to the hearing for the zoning, and they were told that was a duplex 20 years. Well, I did my investigating. It was not. 
it was years and years and years ago, it was a duplex, which was illegal. They had two meters and the circuit breaker box was outside the house and which still is. And the city of South Bend made, made revolution and went through all this problem and they come up and said that all the homes in that southeast side should be single family except for the ones that was built and designed for a duplex. And mine has two stairways, two of everything, two electric, everything. Now, these people here who I have all live in the neighborhood, and I drove by the house and I checked myself. The, the circuit breaker box, yes, it's outside the house, which is illegal. Had been out there for at least 15, 20, 30 years. There's two electrical boxes out there for electric, for duplex. But that's so old, got to be over 20 years old. So no, it has not been a duplex last 20 years, as they claim it was at the zoning mill, at the zoning. And that house is a story and a half. Not a two story, a story and a half. It looked like to me it had a fire, electrical fire, to start with. And in the backyard, there's two six-foot stacks of debris that come from that house because they went ahead and started to revamp it as a duplex. And I called law enforcement. They said, all right, they called back. They said, yes, that's a mess. If they were serious about doing that, they should have had got a dumpster and did it correctly. And the garage is very much disrepair. And they did repair the roof. But if you want to make a repair, why not replace the whole roof? 317 Haney, I replaced the whole roof. Okay. And the people who, do you want, to, want me to read his letters? No, you can give it to the clerks. And sir, so you, you have one minute. These are people that live in the neighborhood. One. Two, three, four, five. They all live in the neighborhood. They're all against it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that house is a small, tiny house. Okay. You're lucky to park two cars in the front street, in front of it. You'll be lucky to park. Okay. And these are people who own the houses in that neighborhood. Okay, thank and you. And it all said that's zone two. The city made a point to do that years ago. I had a house at 230 Haney. I converted back to a single family because the city asked me to, and I did right away. Yeah. This house should have. That's why this house was, is because it was easily a, a duplex. Sir, okay. your, time, your time is up. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Seeing Ms. you have a, uh, five minutes for a rebuttal. You can respond to any questions uh, that anybody said anything against you getting this variance. Okay. Um, this, um, the house is in, um, outside is trash. And I told you before, I start working on it. But, um, yeah, I get um, somebody that knows that work. They said you need to stop and wait for the permit because maybe you're going to do something and later um, you're going to um, lose money. And um, the people he knows how to fix houses and um, it's, um, it's two letters. I don't know how I can say that. Okay, um, mm -hmm. it's prepared for two, um, for two apartments. Um, I wish I can bring pictures, but um, I, well, it's my first time, but I never knew I had to get a lot of stuff. But um, um, the garage um, is bad, that's true, and I say this um, early, I get the, the money to fix it, and I, I can pick it, pick it up that trash, um, not tomorrow, but maybe uh, the following day. And um, the thing that I don't understand, 
why I try to do something legal and uh, do all the stuff that I have to do and um, people they don't agree with me but I see a lot of, a lot of houses um, with many people or two or three families in the same house and they don't pay money to uh, to the city um, I, don't, okay. I try to I try to explain that um, I try to do this thing right, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know okay. I don't know what what I can say, but okay. for sure if you guys um, give it to me the permit, I'm gonna do very pretty um, and safe safety um, place for my daughter because it's the only thing that I have, and I'm gonna do everything the best that I can for her and more safety. Um, I can follow all the um, the rules or the law that they can tell me. I can find the right person to do everything what I have to do. And um, I don't know what else I can say. That's good. Thank you. Uh, the public portion is now closed. We'll turn it back to council for any questions or comments at this point. I have a question. Vice President Davis. So, um, very fine. Uh, this um, board of it's um, building it. Building Hunter meetings was, was the public notified? Yes, uh, every application, there are notices that go out to people within 300 feet of the property edge. And so all three of them, were, for the record, have, they go out? Yes. So basically anybody in the neighborhood who's around there who said that they were not notified, just what happened? They were either outside of that 300 foot radius, they did not see the notice in the paper that was also required, or the letter came back because the address on their property was incorrect. And then in terms of any opposition uh, that you would like to uh, talk about that was at the meeting at the board of BZA? Any? Um, well, in my, my notes, one of the big ones was about on-street parking. And like I said, we don't have any concerns right now. I do believe they'll be able to fit four vehicles. No, no, no. Nothing you are from the neighbors. From the neighbors? That was one of the, okay, well, yeah, was yeah. One of the concerns. Sorry. And another concern was just... Um, about it being supposed to be a single family home. It is zoned SF2, which allows for a duplex as a special exception, which is what this process is about. It's not that it's a prohibited use, it actually is allowed as long as it goes through this process and gets vetted. And that's the nature of this process, that's why we're here tonight. Yes. I appreciate your comments. Any other questions or comments from council? I'd like to make a motion to, um, motion to adopt 1717. Second. Second. Ms. Fowler. Councilmember Varner? Aye. Vice President Davis? Aye. Councilmember Bordy? Nay. Councilmember Furlick? Aye. Councilmember White? Aye. Councilmember Preston? Aye. Councilmember Kelly? Aye. Councilmember Broden? Aye. President Scott? Aye. Eight ayes. Great, thank you. Uh, 1720, please. President Scott, can I make a motion for uh, purpose of the hearing? public hearing, we could hear um, resolution 17, 20, 21, and 22 together for purpose of... Just, okay. just 21 and 20, 20, 21. Okay, 21 and 22. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So I'll wait till okay. we get to that. We will, we will honor that pre-motion when we get to that point. Uh, 1720, please. Ms. Fowler, okay. could you read? 1720, a resolution confirming the adoption of a declaratory resolution 4467-15, designating certain areas within the city of South Bend, commonly known as 122 Calendar Street in South Bend, Indiana, 46614, as an economic revitalization area for purposes of a six-year real property tax abatement for JSK Development, Inc., slash Ireland Hospitality, LLC. Is there a presider? Uh, Jacob Alexander, Committee on Investment, 14th Floor. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, the purpose of this tax abatement is for construction of a four-story, 82-room. Jacob, uh, hold on a minute. Sir. Sir. We're still having our meeting, if you could. That's fine. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead, Jacob. Uh, 
purpose of co purpose of tax abatements for construction of a four-story, 82-room Holiday Inn Express featuring standard amenities, including a conference room, business center, indoor swimming pool, and fitness facilities. Um, Six million investment in new building construction and removal of three existing buildings on the site. Total project taxes during six-year abatement period, one million. $54,265. Estimated taxes being abated, being abated during six year abatement period, $446,712. Total taxes to be paid during abatement period, $607,553. And at this time, I have the petitioner present sure. for any additional questions or concerns. Thank you. Please state your name and address and a brief statement of the reason for the reconfirming. Uh, my name is Dan Beecher. I'm the Director of Development for JSK Hospitality. I'm joined with my AJ Patel, the CEO of JSK. And the reason for the delay that we're requesting tonight is basically a pipeline issue that we've, within the last six months, opened up two additional hotels and obviously started the, the hotel downtown South Bend, uh, as well as planning for two others. And so it's just a matter of we have a company of we are a family-owned company, 12 employees currently in the corporate office, and we just have limited resources. We had a small delay with the first project, which led to a small delay in the second, and so on down the line, and that leads us here today. Um, as I said earlier, we've signed a contract to begin construction in the next two weeks. That has a hard stop at the second week of April 2018. So we are confident that we're underway and uh, that uh, we'll be open this time next year. And I'll take any questions. Okay. Any questions from council? Seeing none, we'll open up to the public. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of 1720, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against 1720, please come to the podium. That public portion is now closed. We'll turn it back to council. Any comments or questions at this time? Most. Go ahead. Motion to adopt 1720. Second. Ms. Fowler. Vice President Davis. Aye. Councilmember Forty. Aye. Councilmember Furley. Aye. Councilmember White. Aye. Councilmember Preston. Aye. Councilmember Kelly. Aye. Councilmember Brody. Aye. Councilmember Farmer. Aye. President Scott. Aye. Nine aye. Thank you. Can I have a motion here, 1721 and 1722 together? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Ms. Fowler, could you read both 1721 and 1722? Sure. 1721, a resolution confirming the adoption of a certain declaratory resolution 4457-15 designating certain areas within the city of South Bend, Indiana, commonly known as 121 South St. Joseph Street, South Bend, Indiana, 46601, as an economic revitalization area for purposes of a nine-year real property tax abatement for JSK Development, Inc., slash South Hold LLC, 1722, a resolution confirming the adoption of a declaratory resolution, 4456-15, designating certain areas within the city of South Bend, Indiana, commonly known as 111 South St. Joseph Street, South Bend, Indiana, 46601, as an economic revitalization area for purposes of a two-year vacant building tax abatement for JSK Development, Inc., slash South Hold LLC. Thank you. Presenter. Community Investment Committee sends oh. us forward favorably. Thank you. Sorry. Kevin. Hmm. Uh, Jacob Alexander, Community Investment, 14th floor. Um, again, the purpose of this tax abatement, construction of a full-service national brand, 140-room hotel and connecting an annex to the former College Football Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame will become a multi-use owner-occupied property which will house all the support services for the new hotel, such as reception, restaurant, et cetera, as well as all the new homes for JSK development corporate offices. Um, 9250000 investment in new building construction and building expansion connection with Hall of Fame. Total project taxes during nine-year abatement period, $2,410,716. Estimated taxes being abated during nine-year abatement period, $945,911. Total taxes to be paid during the abatement period, 
$1,464,805. For Bill uh, 1722, mm -hmm. vacant um, property tax abatement, um, again, purpose is for construction of a full service National Grand Hotel, 140 room connected annex to the former College Football Hall of Fame. Um, the Hall of Fame will be, again, a multi use occupied property which will house, house all the support services for the new hotel. Um, $9,250,000 investment in new building construction and building expansion with Hall of Fame. Total project taxes, total project taxes during two year rebatement period, $173,745.28. Estimated taxes being abated during two year abatement period, $107,783.53 and total taxes to be paid during two year payment period $65,961.75 and again we have the petition present for any additional questions. Great. And petitioner, name and address on both these and just very brief on both. Dan Beecher, JSK Development and uh, Real quick, we talked about this earlier, but I was just realizing that our actually our investment is like 30 percent higher than what we originally said. So those numbers are actually going to go up uh, from what we're talking about. So we work with city staff on a new design uh, that caused some delays, and I think that you're you're all going to be really pleased with the, the final product, and we're excited to get that going and have it be open uh, within this year. And so that is the, the courtyard by Marriott that that's coming online late in 2017. And the Hall of Fame is kind of, kind of coming alongside of that, and that property is uh, still evolving. We have several opportunities that we're dealing with right now, actually currently, and uh, look forward to be able to go into more detail uh, in coming months about those uh, future uses for the Hall, including the corporate office uh, for JSK if, we, if the whole building user that we're currently looking at does, does not pan out. So good things are coming. Great. Thank you. This time, um, Council, any questions? All right, we'll open up to the public. Anyone wishing to speak uh, in favor of either 21 or 1721 or 1722, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against 1721 or 1722, please come to the podium. And if it's specific, please note the bill. Jason Benicki, Critchlow, 3822 West Forest Street, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, it specifically pertains to 1722. I understand that there are always delays in, in developments, and sometimes we've got to push the tax abatement back. However, this delay pertaining to the Hall of Fame being a vacant building particularly is a failure of the corporation's own due diligence and not doing the research before they came to the council with the plan to purchase the Hall of Fame. Moving forward with it, they didn't realize they couldn't put the lobby in a different building than the hotel. Why is it that us taxpayers end up putting the bill for the corporation's failure to do their due diligence, do their homework, before they put forward a plan and came to us, why should we foot the bill for another year of taxes on a property we've been footing the bill for since the day it was billed because they didn't do their job? So, again, that's going to be my specific issue going forward. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak against 1721 or 1722? Seeing none, the public portion is now closed. We'll turn it back to Council. Motion to adopt 1721. Second. Ms. Fowler, we'll call on 1721, please. 1721. Council Member Bordy. Aye. Council Member Curlett. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Council Member Preston. Aye. Council Member Kelly. Aye. Council Member Broden. Aye. Council Member Varner. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. President Scott. Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. I take a motion on 1722, please. Motion for adoption 1722. Second. Ms. Fowler. Council Member Curlett. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Council Member Preston? Aye. Council Member Kelly? Aye. Council Member Broden? Aye. Council Member Varner? Aye. President, Vice President Davis? Aye. Council Member Bordy? Aye. President Scott? Aye. Nine aye. Thank you. We will move first readings. Uh, Ms. Fowler, could you please give reading to 2517? 2517. First reading on an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance for property located at 1405 and 1505 Howard Street, Councilman District Number 4 in the City of South Bend, Indiana. 
Can I entertain a motion to send to APC for June 20th and Common Council for ZNA Committee and Public Hearing for June 26th? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 2617, please. 2617, first reading on an ordinance to amend, correct, and replace ordinance number 10. 431-16 to vacate the following described property, the first north-south alley east of Cushing Street from Lincoln Way West to the first east-west alley for a distance of 193 feet of width of 14 feet, said alley being part of Heiselman's addition and Kuntzman's addition, South City of South Bend, Portage Township, St. Joseph County, Indiana. Entertain a motion to send a public works and property vacation for Common Council for uh, second and third reading on 522. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Uh, 2717. 2717. First reading on an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance for property located at 3015 Western Avenue, Councilmanic District Number 2 in the City of South Bend, Indiana. Make mo or entertain a motion to send to APC for June 20th and Common Council ZNA Committee meeting for public hearing, second and third for June 26th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. 2817, please. 2817, first reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property North South Alley of St. Vincent Street. East of Eddy Street, including two east-west alleys north of Howard Street, south of St. Vincent, and non-vacated right-of-way west of 23 at South Bend of former Georgiana Street. I entertain a motion to send a public works and property vacation in Common Council hearing for 522. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 2917. 2917, first reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property, northwest corner of Howard Street and Eddy Street, including access of right-of-way from former Howard Street alignment. Entertain a motion to send a public works and property vacation in Common Council hearing for 522. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 3017, please. 3017, first reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property, Eastern, 170 plus feet of east-west alley of Eddy Street between St. Vincent Street and Howard Street. Entertain a motion to send a public works and property vacation in Common Council public hearing for second and third readings on 522. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. 3117, please. 3117, first reading on an ordinance to vacate the following described property, north-south alley, making up former Eddy Street, south of Howard Street, and north of Colby Boulevard, including all right-of-way to South Bend Avenue and former South Bend Avenue. Entertain a motion to send a public works and property vacation for public hearing on 522. Someone vote. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Any unfinished business? Yes, I have some. Um, one, members who apply for MBE, WB, and Animal Care and Control, we will make that decision in two weeks at our next Common Council meeting. Uh, and I'll send a note out to all the applicants. Um, also, on the unfinished... Can we make it in the formal section? Yeah, we'll do it under the informal. Okay. Um, and... Gavin, we're also entertaining uh, the idea of... Oh, no, um, just uh, give, give local. Applicants. Oh, yes, I thought you were doing the give local. Yes, uh, attorney um, interviews are next Monday, hopefully starting at 4.30. Okay. Those are interviews only? Uh, yes, yeah, final, finalist interviews. Elodie? We're going to do it at 4.30 before the budget meeting. Yeah. Oh, and no, the budget, no, no. Mm -hmm. final class is better if we'll do it Monday because I've got transfer for it. Four thirty. I'm gonna get over here. From I like to be there. I can make it at five. I can't make it at four thirty. We will. We will look at that this week. Yeah, tentatively planned for four thirty. But that's not. Oh. Mm-hmm. I missed last year. Okay. Now, I mean, what is that? Isn't that? What is that? What is that? No. Okay. Um. Any new business, Gavin? 
Give local. Oh, no. Give local. Day tomorrow. So support local charities. Uh, there's a lot of matching funds available um, if you donate. It's a good thing. Anything else on our new business? Just want to make an announcement on Monday, May 15th. This is something new in terms of the budget uh, hearing process. Uh, we'll be at IV, I'm sorry, um, Century Center at 6 p.m. to really give a brief uh, overview of the upcoming budget process, but also, most importantly, to hear from uh, citizens prior to the actual kickoff. We are working towards identifying ways in which the public can email the council administration using different uh, social media uh, uh, techniques, but most importantly, to be more visible within the community and to really begin to frame the priorities for this upcoming budget hearing process. So it'll be this Monday, 6 p.m. at Century Center. Century, not Ivy Tech. It's not Century Center. Okay. A question? Yes. Um, to, if I might, um, might it be helpful to the public to announce that that city long-term control plan, the PowerPoint, is available online um, and that the recording, will we have recordings that are available online or will it just be minutes from our committee? The, the recordings are available online on the C website and on YouTube mm -hmm. and in the book. Okay, great. And then um, we were all mailed that PowerPoint in mm -hmm. the inner. Um, and then, um, two, with regard to the uh, minority business, uh, women business committee, um, we have received several pieces of information in our inboxes, uh, Council Member White and myself, and I think, Tim, you might have been copied on that, um, but I think we should get that out to them. The whole entire council got packets based on our last meeting. So. Everybody had received. Yep. I just want to check that yep. everybody had received that information. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Um, would it be possible to ask uh, the administration um, to uh, present on their directions and goals for that board? Um, the or MBWB updates? board is driven by the Common Council. So from your packet of information, you can fire away, ask all the questions you want to, whomever you'd like to ask. Um, and do your homework, and we'll vote in two weeks. Yeah, I think there were, if I could comment, there was a couple specific questions from the last meeting um, that we had as council members when we were looking at that, and one was um, uh, the reports, the previous reports, so thank you, um, uh, clerks and, and your staff, for sending the annual report from 2016. Um, and uh, I think 2015 was also sent earlier in the year, so thank you for that. So that was information. But I think we were looking also for um, the vacancies that exist, um, uh, and several of those are to be filled by the administration. So um, I think we were – what was brought up at the last meeting was what their intent was in terms of um, filling those positions um, and – uh, I think the Chamber of Commerce also has a, a right. spot on that as well. As so, and then I think um, just filling out um, skill sets and um, uh, of the existent members or those prospective members. Okay. I, I so, believe. in my opinion, there's still some information that would help um, us in, in terms of making the best appointments to those councils and the, or that's commission, and also. Um, uh, hopefully setting it up for success. And like I said, uh, everybody has the information packet. They have a list of the uh, uh, appointees to each board. And if there's vacancies, that's up for the administration and the Chamber of Commerce. As far as skill sets, um, I think that's the homework that you need to do on your own on that or ask the Chamber of Commerce administration in that. Mr. Davis, you had something else. I was going to concur. If we need to get an understanding of what the administration looking for, I would encourage us all to speak with the mayor, the yep. chief of staff, um, regarding that. Or uh, Ms. Brooks, who is now um, also can give her input. Mm -hmm. But uh, I really think that we need to move forward on this vote. Mm -hmm. We should have enough information, and I think it's to in the middle of May. Yep. Uh, it's going to be the end of May, and I think it's time to roll. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. We're going to move on to privilege of the floor.
Who is the floor? This is where individuals who wish to address the council must state their name and address and resident, residential address. Individuals are limited to three minutes only. The maximum time limit for this portion of the meeting is 30 minutes. Individuals may address uh, issues which the city has jurisdiction. Individuals may not be permitted to address any of topics that were heard tonight on this agenda. And from there, we will assign uh, action items to either the administration, the city clerk, or within council members and their uh, committees. At this time, anyone wishing to speak in th um, at privilege of the floor, please come to the podium, state your name and address. My name is Samuel Brown. I live at 222 East Navarre Street, the city of and I got a West Coast group called Service United for a Better Government. Uh, I want to uh, attack the ordinance. Um, and Mr. Woody uh, kind of made a statement about it not parking on a vacant lot or a grass without having some men underneath it. Well, really, at this particular time, I'm not really prepared to uh, give a piece to the council. This is just like about Memorial Hospital. I look at the never can't be without doing their homework. It took two years for Tim Scott and I and Mr. Horvath to get that problem solved up there uh, on St. Joseph Street, north from the bar. It took us two years, but it finally worked out and we got it done. So I'm going to go through this whole thing and I'm going to show the hardship what this is causing the people that are on Sabre Street. And I'm going to go to my uh, council person who is being oppressed and meet me out there and I'm going to do a thorough presentation on that and see where are we going with this. Because just like Obama Mara has said, the hardship that was causing on the people in that area, this is another one that's causing a hardship over there on Sabre Street. And I need Mr. Preston to come out with me. And then I'm going to go through it and I'm going to show you what we're facing. And I want to thank Mrs. Scott for taking care of that uh, problem up there north of uh, Navarro and the St. Joe, because he said that was one of them that was a never. But thanks to him and Mr. Horvath, we got a side. So I hope me and Mr. Preston can get this from Thank you. Name and address. Jason Benicki Critchlow, 3822 West 4th Street, South Bend, Indiana. Going to try and sneak in a couple things tonight. We'll see how it goes. Uh, first thing is, again, we're getting close to budget time. I always like to talk about things I like to see in the budget, things I hope to see in the budget. Uh, we have an administration that loves consultants and loves studies and loves surveys. Uh, so one thing I wish to, to call for in this year's budget is for a SIP study, a survey of income and program participation. Uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, we have, you know, we have an abnormally high level of poverty in the city. Mm -hmm. What most don't realize is inside the United States, 4% of households live at or below $2 per person per day poverty level, which is considered worldwide poverty level. Do we know what that number is in this city? I guarantee we don't, but we should. Because it makes it really hard to make decisions on where we should be spending our dollars and where our focus for our program should be until we know what that level of that SIP level poverty is. So I think that's why we need to put that SIP study in the budget so we can really see not just, hey, South Bend has a 45 to 50 percent working poor level, but what's that true hardcore poverty look like in the city and what can we do to ease that suffering of our fellow citizens. And then the other thing I'm going to say is uh, one of the things I noticed when I was in Charlotte is, you know, we had a ton of Lyft and Uber drivers there. You have a ton of them in this city. In Charlotte, to drive for Lyft and Uber, you had the exact same rules in place as a taxi driver. Here, we don't. If you're here, if you're a taxi, you have that nice big sticker on the back of your window, identifies the, the vehicle number, gives you a number to call to offer the city feedback. I think that's something that the city needs to look forward to going forward, is to put those all those programs on the same level. That way, nobody's getting an unfair advantage. Okay. Thank sense. you. Okay, next, name and address. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Henry Davis, Jr., um, address 5117 Ottawa Drive, and I actually I am here. Hopefully I can get through this in three minutes. Um, the first deals directly with my house, um, directly in front of my house. Um, I, I, I'm a believer uh, in Jesus Christ. 
Uh, I've been saved since I was nine years old, and I really don't, you know, I make no, no beans about it. I'm serious about that. Um, just last week, there was a young man that was uh, murdered uh, 100 yards from my front door. Um, yes, uh, today, um, the children that live in that direct neighborhood, my son's friends, they all go to one school. They were involved in a bus accident coming home from school. Um, and then, maybe about two hours ago, perhaps, there was a young man traveling down Idlewood, same street I live on, directly in front of, in front of my house. He's whizzing past. I can hear this tire screeching, fish telling, blows through my yard mm -hmm. into the next yard. Trucks turns over on top. The kids were outside playing. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that there is a spirit of death in the atmosphere. I just named it from the first time the young man got killed last week. What I'm asking you guys here in the natural is to pay attention to what's going on in that direct neighborhood. Seven years ago, I was a member of the council and I asked Mr. Gary Jalot to uh, provide us with some sort of like round mound or a speed bump in that area because there's a vicious curve right there. I don't care if you're going 10 miles per hour or 100 miles per hour, it's still vicious. It's just a really bad turn there. Um, so no one really slows down until they get there. By that time, it's too late. The house 10 feet west of me has been a parking lot for many of these cars. There are kids, a lot of children in this area, tons of kids in this area. Uh, and they're not all black and all white and all grown and all. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. There's a very good That's mix right. of kids over there. And I would hate to see another Tristan Moore situation uh, going too soon because of the Hitler uh, uh, accident occurs with one of his children. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm impressed upon the council members. We have 20 uh, seconds. Uh, thank you, sir. To uh, look at this particular area and, and give it some much needed support. I'm not talking about any stop signs. I'm not talking about any yield signs. I'm talking about something that will slow down the traffic, such as a round mile or a speed bump, because they can be done. It doesn't change the property value. It will be a very good help to our eight -year, my eight-year-old son and all of his buddies in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. To that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Good night, everybody. I don't want I don't want I don't want I so, no, I talked to you, I wanted to tell you, I talked to Carrie Boyles, we're looking at uh, college, we're looking at college, and uh, Dewey, and Elgin, and Elgin, you know how straight that is in North, and they're flying over there, so we'll look at that too. Yeah, well, I'll take care of it, we need to be together, I know what you're talking about. There's a trend. There's a trend not only your area but all over the cities. All our north streets going from Lincoln Way to Lincoln. Yeah, that's crazy. So I don't know if they're prepared for that. But you're talking about that turn. So we're going to get this back. We're going to get an email to Gary or me or. Well, no, you just passed me. I'm well, just, you're talking about yeah. from me to 